Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Um, doing okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we're, we're both doing only yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're both pretty coffee. Um, so, yeah, sorry about last week. That just, when it came yeah. time to record last week, um, I couldn't go three seconds without coughing. Oh, that's right. I forgot you're the one who had backed out. Yep. yep. I had totally forgotten about that. Yeah. No, <laughs> because I, I backed out the second time because then I got sick. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't have recorded a podcast the end of last week. Oh, that's right. Just, I, I'd totally forgotten about it. that. And I, you know, I had some questions about today, frankly, too, cause I just can't seem to quite shake the cough. Yeah. Um, well, I'm in the same boat now. I got sick over the weekend and, and on the mend now. So yeah. we're, we're both, it's, Hey, it's going around, man. Like not yeah. just us, like people I talk to, like it's, it's out there, man. And I am, I am, I didn't go to work today because I was uh, coughing so bad, like most of the day. Yeah. And I, I, I'm mostly like, I'm actually like barely holding it together right now. Like I can feel this cough building yeah. and I don't want it, <laughs> I don't want it to happen, but it's yeah. going to. This is either going to be yeah. a really coffee podcast, or you're going to have to go back in and edit all of those coughs out. Oh, there's out. no way. There's no way. Um, <laughs> so just so, had to. So everybody's just going to have to be prepared. There's well, going to be some coughing going on. The next investment is going to be mute pedals. Yeah, we need those. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So, but we do have we do have lots of stuff to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and so, well, yeah, because when I had came over, I had thought about being like, yeah, we should try to make it a little shorter since we're both kind of on the mend or whatever. But there's mm-hmm. just too much to talk about. Like, yeah. there's, I mean, we're going to end up with a full podcast here. Yeah. There's a, more than a full podcast worth of subject matter out there. Mm-hmm. Well, so. and, and I'd like to start with something that happened at the end of last week that um, definitely would have been our uh, breaking news or headline news. At least I think it would have been. Um, and still isn't getting enough conversation, I don't think. Yep. Um, which is that the uh, that Pretty Patel, the Home Secretary or whatever her her job title is in uh, the UK, has approved the extradition of Julian Assange to the United States. Oh wow! I must have missed that. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, it happened like uh, Wednesday, Thursday last week. Really? Yeah. Um, now the, it's not over yet. Okay. okay. So let me, let me yeah, okay. go well, ahead. Then, and, yeah. Pump the brakes then. I thought yeah. you meant they were sending him on a flight this week or something. No, no, no. Um, he's got a couple of appeals, okay. uh, still to do. All right. Um, but, uh, I, it just, uh, this is the death knell for press freedom in the U S. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it is regardless of whether they end up. Actually extraditing him or, or not. not. Yeah. Um, like even, uh, you know, um, Biden's old buddy Obama wasn't trying to um, prosecute Julian Assange. And yeah. um, but now it, there's all these, um, you know, they're using the. Oh gosh, what's the name of it? It's the 1917 law that Woodrow Wilson used to imprison dissidents and people that were opposed to the war. Um, I don't know. Espionage Act. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, so they there's well, and there's one like uh, conspiracy to um, break into a government computer or something. I don't remember exactly, but the yeah. rest of it is all um, Espionage Act stuff. Really? Which is kind of amazing because Julian Assange is not a U.S. citizen, <laughs> um, nor has he done any of this supposed illegal activity on U.S. soil. You, you've got a situation here where the U.S. has actually, like, <coughs> exported its law... To another country. Yeah, uh, yeah. to um, prosecute uh, a citizen of another country. Yeah. Like, not the country would, where he's... Like, and anyway. You would, you would think that that country would step in and be like, hey, wait a minute. Like, yeah. Um, but... You know, they're treating him like a terrorist. And the reason that they're treating him like a terrorist, of course, is because... And the reason that the UK is going along with it is because WikiLeaks has exposed uh, crime and corruption, like criminal activity and corruption um, at the highest levels of both the US and the UK governments. Yeah. Yeah. And war crimes in the Middle East and so on and so forth. It's really embarrassed both governments. Yeah. and he's not getting any support from either side in the U.S. because um, in the U.S. he's the, for the Republicans he's the traitor that um, 
um, is, uh, it, you know, got a whole bunch of uh, military people killed, which is a lie. Yeah. Um, and to the Democrats, he's the uh, the he traitor the, yeah, that put Trump in office for Putin. Yep, exactly. So, so he, he has no allies here. <laughs> no, um, not even the press, which is really a mistake. And, and the really frustrating thing about that, of course, is because uh, there's a whole bunch of journalists out there that have made their careers using the material from WikiLeaks. Right. <laughs> but they're not yeah. going to step up to defend him now. Yeah. Um, and the, the truth is that he, what he was doing was he was publishing material that I think is in the interest of the citizens of the United States. Yeah. Well, in other countries too, but specifically for us, yeah. um, in the interest of the United States, exposing criminal activity and corruption Especially, in our government. Yeah. Well, and, and things that they're and doing in, our, in, in the name of the citizens of the United States yeah. and with our money. Well, and that's what I was kind of going to get to with the war log stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. that's stuff that, I mean, that's being done, just like you said, in our name. Like that's, that's U.S. Gov or U.S. military actions, yeah. you know. Um, and of course, and not ones to be proud of. No, absolutely not. And the cable gate stuff too, spying on allies and so forth. Yeah. Not that I, I mean, you kind of assume that that's going on. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it included to the, have it all out there wide open like that. Yeah, but it, it also included the stuff where they were um, spying on uh, um, UN representatives and uh, using information to blackmail. Um, uh, other countries at the UN to vote the way that we wanted them to and things yeah. like that, um, which is a, a level of, of international corruption that I think is worth yeah. exposing. Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it, you know, it, like anybody who has any kind of sense of morality and ethics should okay. realize should, this is, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the wrong path. And uh, then of course the last thing, and probably the one that, that really put him in the position that he's in now um, is that he exposed uh, the CIA uh, Vault 7 materials. Um, yeah. He published the Vault 7 materials that was showing how the CIA um, was able to uh, access uh, a huge number of devices and leave trails that would lead to um, other countries. Yeah, make it look like somebody else did it. Yeah. Um, so, I, I don't know. I To me, like... I'm not going to say that he's he's a hero because what he was doing was publishing the materials. To me, it's yeah. more the like the Mannings and the yeah. you know the, the people, people that who were did the leaking work on the ground. Yeah, yeah, that were leaking this information to him that are the the real heroes. Yeah. But um, Assange is a legitimate journalist, and yeah. there's the thing in the United States, and of course we you know we continue to talk about how the constitution doesn't really have any meaning. Yeah. Um, but we do have, you know, codified freedom. in the United States, the freedom of the press. Absolutely. Even if it, there's no <laughs> caveat in there about, unless right? it embarrasses the government. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, well, that's not there to talk about the weather, man. Like it's ta it's there for, for just this type of thing. Exactly. You know? Um, and, and that should be the concern for everybody here is that it, like, not just, um, like even if they don't pub or uh, prosecute journalists in the future, or they you know create some other kind of carve out for the New York Times or the Washington Post, you know that only releases the information that's fed to them by the government, yeah. um, the the illegal material that's fed to them by the <laughs> government, the controlled leaks, yeah. um, the it puts a real chilling effect on investigative journalism to try and and expose get down uh, to the truth. Yeah, the the corruption and yeah. the activities of the people that represent you supposedly in government. Yeah. And, um, and this is something that's, that's really important to a free society. Oh, absolutely. And the loss of press freedom or even, you know, the, uh, co-opting of the press by the government, this is, this is a, a bad pathway to take. Yeah. Um, and this leads to, uh, an, uh, you know, an autocracy. Oh, absolutely. And, um, so that's, that's kind of, I mean, uh, want to over dramatize it but that's kind of what we're facing here with the assange thing um he should not be being prosecuted at all and at this point um i think that they're they're probably just content to wait it out he's in bad health yeah. um they're putting him into like he's in I, I think he's not in solitary anymore but for a long time that they had him in belmarsh prison and 
um, the UK, he was in solitary confinement, while they were also at the same time saying that they didn't want to extradite him to the US because the bad prison conditions could kill him, and they're <laughs> right. keeping him in terrible prison conditions there. Yeah. Um, I, I actually think that probably all of these groups are, would be perfectly happy with him just dying. Yeah. Um, because then they don't have and to deal they, with yeah. it further. Yeah. Uh, they've waited long enough and gotten what they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it, and, uh, you know, <laughs> like I think they said on uh, No Agenda <coughs> Show recently that all podcasts do is um, expose uh, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Yeah, I heard um, that. Yeah. And, but I do want to point out that at the same time that, that the U.S. is trying to prosecute uh, Julian Assange, um, they're making a real issue out of, uh, you know, Putin um, imprisoning or uh, persecuting journalists uh, for dissent in um, Russia and at the same time ignoring uh, Zelensky in Ukraine doing the same thing. Right. Um, who, uh, like, uh, just for a little background on that, because you probably haven't heard, um, mm. unless you heard it here, yeah. <laughs> uh, Zelensky shut down. Um, uh, three, I think it was, uh, opposition news channels uh, or sites in 2021, yeah. like before the war even, even started. started. Yeah. Um, and then um, he suspended um, 11 opposition, like suspended activities for 11 opposition political parties in March, and he nationalized three more TV networks uh, that were in opposition. Um, and so he took away the private news channels and made them state news channels uh, well, that's so they could control they were, the they information. Were, that's because they were spreading fake news, I'm sure. That's right? exactly it. It was Russian propaganda. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, you know, this kind of thing is going on all over the place, and, and the U.S. certainly doesn't care because they're a part of it. Well, yeah. I mean, we do it here in the U.S. right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go... And this is, I know we're going to talk about fuel stuff later, I guess, but something I just wanted to kind of mention on the podcast today that I'm personally extremely annoyed about is these memes keep popping up about like $2 gas versus where gas is now and that type of thing. And they all keep getting like, literally, you will have like a line of fact checks down the, down the meme. Um, you can't even read the whole meme because it's all like clouded over with fact checks and misinformation. And it's like... It's not really that even and when you click and read what the it's it's like not even really an argument for misinformation. Mm -hmm. It's because most of them are satire anyway, but it's all arguments. Well, ga it says two dollar gas and gas was really two fifteen back then and blah yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, like not like kind of not getting at the point. And it's just annoying. And it's but it goes back to this whole deal of like we're just as bad as far as like trying to control information because. Everybody knows that, or at least I think everybody knows. I mean, when Facebook and something does like something <laughs> like that, they're doing it to to try to lay lay cover for the current administration. Yeah, I mean that's that's what that is. Um, I don't know, just my little pet peeve. <laughs> yeah. Um. I okay. Uh, I think. Oh, I found a, a transition in there, but. Um, did then I, I, then did I, I then move I, right over yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, just went right on past it. Um, well, okay, I mean, but it, it does provide an opportunity to talk about the WHO <laughs> stuff. You got to turn farther. Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, I don't know that uh, I'm keeping my coughs quiet either, but... <coughs> maybe, I'll, <See>? maybe I'll <laughs> turn the other way. <laughs> maybe um, that'll help. <laughs> but uh, the... Okay, so, there, you know, talk about misinformation. Um there's so much information, contradictory information out there about the the World Health Organization's uh, changes in at the end of May yeah. that I can't figure out what's true and what's false. Uh, like I've read a ton of stuff, yeah, and I don't know who to trust on any of it. Well, but the story um, was that the uh, what is it called? Um, I, I forget what the acronym stands for, but the WHA is the governing body of the WHO. Okay. And um, they were having a meeting at the end of May um, to uh, discuss some proposals about how to handle pandemics in the future and deal with other things as well. Like they, they spent a bunch of time talking about non-communicable diseases as well, like how are we going to fight diabetes in the world and you know, oh, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, there, was, uh, there was a lot of talk beforehand that they were 
trying to um, create this pandemic treaty that would power empower um, the WHO to prescribe le- legislation and treatments to member nations um, for future pandemics. But you know, pandemics is in Could quotes here. It's like yeah, things, it's yeah. it's very ill defined. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, peop- and uh, then the stories were um, were fact checked false. Yeah. Uh, that oh no, this isn't what's happening. Um, the and, and one of them I even read, I think it was Reuters or somebody said, uh, well the WHO is considering um, some amendments to their uh, you know governing documents about pandemics, um, but it's not real clear what they're all about. So this is false. Well, no, that's not what you just said. I mean, <laughs> right. what you said is you don't know what it is they're considering. Yeah. Not that the things that are being said here are false. Are false. So. <laughs> yeah. Like, and and that's just to go back to the fact check thing. That's what annoys me about mm-hmm. these fact check things to begin with. It would be one thing if they if they at least provided like solid information. Mm-hmm. But dude, the fact check is just as riddled with misinformation as the the whatever they're fact checking. Yeah. So um, or at least as uh, just as enigmatic like it's yeah. you know very non-specific a lot of the time yeah. um so you know just to kind of cut to the end a little bit on this the, the who all right no maybe not quite to cut to the well yeah all right so the <laughs> who the the only amendment to the um the uh documents that everybody is a member that's a member of the who is party to yeah um The only amendment that they actually considered uh, related to pandemics and passed was uh, they shortened the time um, after a new amendment is passed before it takes effect from two years to one year. Okay. All right. So that's the only thing that they actually changed. Um, But as far as these other, uh, you know, the the rumors about these proposed amendments that were um, giving the WHO like greater powers in the nations that are that are member states, um, there had to have been something to it. Uh, there was like a document that was signed by something like 40 African nations saying that they weren't giving up sovereignty and so forth, that they were opposed to all these amendments that the U S was proposing, um, to change the, the way pandemics were handled in the future and so forth. Now, I don't know what all those amendments were. Yeah, but there was something that, there. So, yeah, obviously, that they was wouldn't just be them. signing these things and putting them out there if there wasn't something to it. Yeah. Right. Um, so now, what I think <laughs> that was a little better. Um, <laughs> that I, you know, it's funny is when I turn and I cough, I can't see the levels, so I don't know so if you, I'm doing a good <laughs> job <laughs> hiding it or not. Um, Anyway, uh, the now what I think is happening here is that there was enough scrutiny this time around that they were like, look, let's just not, you know, yeah. there's no way we can discuss this stuff without everybody hearing about it. Let's just let it go. What we're going to do is we're going to pass this one proposal that shortens the time after we accept a new proposal before it takes effect. And we'll deal with the other things. Yeah. When things settle down. Yeah, later. We could deal with them for a year from now, and we'd still be on the same timeline because <laughs> it went from two years to one year until adoption. Yeah. Right? Because we're just buying time. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I just I don't think that this thing is over. The WHO has admitted, has, has said themselves that they want to take... Um, you know, more, uh, more authority in world health and so forth. So, yeah. um, well, I have questions. So I don't know that I can answer. Them. I don't know that you can either, but I'm just curious. So didn't Trump take us out of yes. the WHO? Yes. But we're back in now. Yeah. Right? For one of the first things Biden did. Okay. Was re-enter the WHO. Well, when, when, so are we still, do we need, were those treaties ever ratified by Congress? I don't know. Probably not, because we don't handle anything like we're supposed to. I um, imagine it was pretty similar to the Paris Accords, yeah, um, where you know Obama entered into the Paris Climate Treaty or Paris yeah, Accords unilaterally. To they're me, supposed to go through the Senate. Yeah, they're, they're supposed, supposed to be to voted on in the Senate. But even with Paris, though, I mean, there was really nothing binding with those, right? Yeah. 
I mean, well, the only they thing were, they binding... were agreements like, hey, we're, this is what we're going to do. It, but when there's no teeth behind it, you know. It, it doesn't matter, though. If you're entering into an agreement with another nation as, as a representative of the United to... States, it's supposed to go through the Senate to yeah. be approved. Well, I mean, that's what I thought was the procedure. But... Yeah. Um, but the, we don't we don't do any we don't do anything by the Constitution anymore. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is like mm-hmm. how how ridiculous is our Constitution? By the way. Well, he, here's the other thing about the the WHO stuff. Like the fact that that nothing changed here doesn't mean a thing for us here in the United States because yeah. whatever it is that they wanted to do, they're going to do anyway well, because it was the U.S.'s proposals that uh, that were all these amendments that were supposed to change how this was handled really? in the future. And the um, what the teeth that the WHO has is backing by the U.N. Yeah. And the U.N. is essentially the U.S. Army. I was fixing to say. Yeah. Well, so. Exactly. And, and at the end of the day, this doesn't really affect us that much anyway because just kind of to your point, uh, the dub, if the bad stuff that's going to happen in these type of situations mm-hmm. is going to come from our own government. Yeah, it's not going to come from uh, some nation in Africa trying to impose its will on the U.S. Yeah, like that's that's, that's exactly why it's their concern is because the yeah. U.S. can impose its will on exactly. you know, Tanzania or whatever. Exactly. Um, but uh, and but tr- you're right. The 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 person the the entity that's trying to impose its will on everybody else is the U.S. government. So yeah. we got to deal with it no matter what. Exactly. Yeah. So, but it is it is interesting to. I mean, it's good to know this is going on. This fight's being had out there. Yeah. So. Um. And you know, the warning here is to keep paying attention because yeah. they're just this isn't this isn't gone. They're oh, just no. going to try and do this again later when when fewer people are paying attention. Exactly. Whatever it is that they're trying to do, yeah. which we can't figure out, and that should be a concern in and of itself, yeah. is that you know we're uh, we're trying to make changes to an international governing body without telling anybody in the world what those changes are. Yeah, like what are they actually trying to do here? Yeah. Um, um, the fact that it's covered up should be a concern yeah. just by itself. Well, maybe all the just like, maybe um, all the real journalists that are really concerned out there because they've seen what's happened to Assange and they're like, "Well, I'm not digging that hole up." Yeah, exactly. I mean, you might be right. Um, you remember the uh, oh gosh, what was the treaty called? The um, Pacific Treaty that uh, that Trump refused to sign. It just oh. kind of died. Um, it was the Pacific Rim stuff. I, I can't remember what yeah. it was called now. Um, but it, that, that was the same thing. It was this huge doc- trade treaty yeah um that very little of it was made public and all of these nations were entering into it including yeah. our own yeah um at the time and uh <coughs> and nobody nobody knew what was what was being agreed to yeah yeah no i do remember that on our behalf because yeah and uh, i remember specifically <clears throat> with that one there was a um a lot of sovereignty being Given away during that too. Well, I mean, that was certainly the rumor, but we don't know. Well, yeah, we don't know. Well, that is, you're right, that is rumor. That, but I remember that being talked about that mm-hmm. there was a lot of sovereignty being lost there. But mm-hmm. once again, just like you're saying, you can't get solid information on. Yeah, it. I, I mean, I think that the the sovereignty being lost there was that the. Um, you know, disputes were handled by some kind of international tribunal or whatever. Like that, yeah. I mean, most of the trade treaties, that's kind of how it's done. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, that means that some international body can press charges against U.S. companies or whatever for yeah. violating these these treaties. I only vaguely remember, so I don't... Yeah, but I do. that does sound correct, though. Yeah. Um, okay, so wh- what do we want to hit next? Uh, you name it, man. <laughs> well... Okay, so we've got um, the price gouging stuff. We've got the Defense Production Act stuff, or we could just oh, yeah. like enter into all of it with the uh, fuel stuff. Right, let's just go into fuel, man. All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I don't think I've got to make any big announcements on what's going on with fuel right now. It's expensive as it's ever been. Yeah, well, but they're um, they're trying to drop taxes. The yeah, so and that's the bi- that's so that's the big news this week. Yeah. So the the news this week is obviously gas prices are through the roof, and the Biden administration is got its tail between its legs. It doesn't know what to do because in the end, 
I mean, I'm not going to say that they created this problem all on their own, but they've done nothing but exacerbate it from the beginning. Yeah. Um, and everybody knows it. Like, it's not, I mean, you can ask Democrats, you can ask Republicans, like, pipelines are important. Mm -hmm. And this, this administration is against pipelines. Yeah. So with gas prices hitting $5 a gallon, it's a problem for the Democrats. So they're trying to figure out what to do. And so the latest proposal this week, which there'll be another one next week, I'm sure, um, is to do away with the gas tax. Yeah. Um, or suspend it for a number of years, I think. Well, is no, I think it's like three months. Yeah. Oh, is it that short? Yeah, I think it's like three months. Really? I didn't realize it was that yeah. short. Yeah. Um, um, oh, so this will be just to get us through summer then. Yeah, um, it'll get more or less to get us to the election. Yeah, yeah. But um, to the 2022 elections, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's really I mean, it'll it'll take effect in August. And the idea will be that it gets us to the the. 2022 yeah. November election, which there doesn't seem to be a big appetite for doing this in Congress. Um, I don't know. And I don't know specifically why. I mean, the biggest argument that I've seen um, Congress people make is that it's just not going to do any good. Well, it probably won't. Yeah. Um, the, the tax itself is only like 14 or 18 cents, something like that yeah. um, at the federal level. Now they're encouraging states to, to, and suspend a their number, taxes a number too. of states already have. I, I saw a list. I, I say a number like five or six is what I saw yeah. yesterday. Um, but you're right. The, the you know, okay. Say for uh, my car, um, which has like a 16 gallon tank. Yeah. All right. Um, if I'm paying five dollars a gallon. Yeah. For gas right now. Um, then that's eighty dollars to fill my tiny little car. By the way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Eighty dollars to fill my tiny little car. You save me twenty cents a gallon. Yeah. I'm paying seventy six dollars yeah. to fill. I mean, it's it's marginal. Yeah. yeah. Um. So and, yeah, I I don't. I'm with you. I don't think that this that that's not going to be what moves the needle here. No. Um. The thing that worries me, and and I keep hearing this more and more and more. Um, from everybody is that, uh, you know, the, and we've talked about it before on the podcast, I think too, is that the oil companies are bringing in record profits mm -hmm. and, um, a lot is of that adjusted for inflation. Probably not. I'm sure it's not. <laughs> but, um, at any rate, that's still, there's a lot of talk about trying to do something about that. And I just, I'm a freedom guy and I believe in free markets and I, Trying to price control and interfere in free markets ends up in bad places. Okay, yep. So let's go right into that. So then um, Elizabeth Warren proposed a uh, price gouging bill that prohibits, quote, unconscionably excessive prices, yeah. end quote, during a, quote, exceptional market shock, end quote. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, supposed to, it, the plan is to force companies to explain price increases and show that they're due to additional costs that are not under their control. Um, but like all, again, this is a bunch of ill-defined terms. Yeah. What's an unconscionably excessive price? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like what where we're at now is pretty bad, but to, but, but, is that, but here's the, here's the problem I have though, mm -hmm. is I don't want the government being the one that's defining that. Yeah. Because that's not, that's just, <clears throat> we know how government does when they define things. Mm. Like they define it in whatever is, it's not like. Whatever's it, convenient for them. What's best for them at the yeah. time. It's not like we're dealing with this benevolent, like government that has this track record of always being good and right and a good force in the world. Yeah. That's not who we're dealing with mm -hmm. here. We're dealing with the U.S. federal government. Mm -hmm. Like, enough said. <laughs> yeah, should be. <laughs> um, but a lot of people believe in government. A the, lot of people the, do. The government has the answers, and the government can fix the problems, and the government should. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I think is a, a big part of our problem, but that that's a topic for another day, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, so what's an excessive market shock, too, or an exceptional market shock? No. Like, if if the U.S. starts a war somewhere, so let, yeah. let's, you know, let's say that it, you know, it happens somewhere else. What if, well, it, it's irrelevant now because... Well, I was going to say, let's say we decide we want to put sanctions on Russia. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, well, what if we wanted to invade Iran? Okay. Uh, yeah. so That's like, another good Or one. Venezuela. Yeah. Like, yeah. these are two uh, two more of the biggest oil producers in the world. Yeah. Which, by um, the way, we've threatened to invade Well, they're completely... They're, they're sanctioned completely. Like, their yeah. oil is cut out of the market as well. Yeah. Uh, out of the U.S. market, anyway. Yeah. Um, 
So l- let's say that if we didn't have all these sanctions in Iran and Iran's oil was available for us to buy, prices would be lower right now, first off. Yeah. But, um, and then we decided to, uh, to go to war with Iran because Israel asked us to or whatever. Yeah. Um, does that count as an exceptional market shock? Yeah. It, does the, a market shock created by the U.S. government <laughs> then allow the U.S. government to take control over business in the, in the U.S., according to and, this bill? I, and the truth is, I have, actually, I think that even the, the people that are proposing this bill would say yes. Yeah, probably. They, they would. I think that they would be like, yeah, you know, that's, you know, because in their mind, it's like, well, we, we only did this because we had to. Well, yeah, sure. That, because they've already justified the war. See, where, but where me and you are at, we're like, well, the war is not justified to begin with. Mm-hmm. So, Well, and there's a second one of these bills, too. It's the Consumer Fuel Price Gouging Prevention Act. Um, and this one even takes it a step farther. It uses a lot of the same language, you know, um, they, uh, unconscionably excessive prices. Terms. No, I mean like the same phrases, oh, unconscionably yeah. excessive prices, oh, really? yeah. exceptional market shocks. We really need some definitions for some of these I terms. <laughs> I'm sure some lawyer can give you a good one. I'm sure they will. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure some other lawyer could com- give could you a give completely you a different, different one. good one. Exactly. Uh, but... Um, this one does take it a step farther and allows the president to issue price controls for fuels um, for specific geographic areas or not. Yeah. Um, the specific geographic area could be the continental United States. Or <laughs> right. <whatever>. But, um, <laughs> uh, but he first, can drill it down if he wants to. Yeah. yeah. Um, specific fuel types. So, you know, diesel but not gasoline or, um, yeah. you know, whatever. Uh, and, uh, for specific time periods, um, not to exceed 30 days, but it's renewable. Yeah. Yep. That's the trick. So So every 30 days he can be like, yep, we're going another 30 guys. Yep. Just like during COVID with all the COVID stuff. Then that was the same type deal where we're, we're, you know, mass mandate for the next 30 days. Yeah. How long did the terrorist state of emergency, uh, stay in effect after 9-11? Oh, I don't know. It was a long time. I'm sure it was a while though. Yeah. Um, well, here's what happens when this is this is how you turn <clears throat> um, high prices into shortages. Yeah, like we're fixing to learn another economic like absolute. Yeah, like and there there are there, these things exist. There are things in economics that you can try to skate by and get by with, mm-hmm. and there are things you can't. And this is one of them. Yeah. Um, that. I mean, we've talked about price gouging so many times oh, on this yeah. podcast, but uh, I mean, it bears repeating, I suppose, um, that what the prices do first, prices are a signal in a bunch of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things that prices do in terms of price gouging, uh, which I, I don't think is actually a thing. Yeah. I, so let me start with that right. premise. Yeah. Like price gouging is not a thing. It's a market price. Yeah. Um, it may be high because supply is low or demand is high or both. Yeah. Um, and either way, uh, it drives the price up. Yeah. Like regardless of which one of those yeah, things it is, it's day, going to drive the price yeah, up. That's it, just, a again, yeah. supply and demand. Well, and the, if the price is too high, the people won't buy it. They'll go to where the price is reasonable. Right. Because I remember this specifically with ammo. Mm-hmm. Um, give you a little example. The range I go to always has ammo. Like there's ammo on the shelf. Even when things got really bad and you couldn't find ammo anywhere, mm-hmm. they had it. You know why? Because nobody was, was willing to pay that price. It was literally three times what the already high price was. Mm-hmm. So you wanted it, you could get it, but and that was a. I think that was a conscious decision that they made. Is that mm-hmm. well, when we get it, we're just going to price it so astronomically high. We'll have it if we ever sell any of it. We'll make money off of it. But mm-hmm. not, the truth is, we're barely ever going to sell any because everybody knows these prices are insane. Yeah. Um, well, um, but but that's that's a market reaction type mm-hmm. thing, though. I mean, that's a that's a decision made by them to to pull the price that high yeah. so that they have it in stock. Um, the flip side of that is if prices are too low. Uh, when people perceive um, a scarcity. Yeah. And there's always scarcity. Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, when people perceive a scarcity, um, if the price is too low, people buy m- much more than they need, yeah. which means that some people don't get it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what the, the high prices do is they, <coughs> they more evenly distribute the product across the people that need it. Yeah. That's... That's the role. The other thing that it does is high prices draw people into an industry. Yeah. Because they can make money. Like yeah. if like right now, um, 
in a in a natural market, people would be entering the energy industry because yeah. they can make tremendous profits because the prices of everything are so high. Yeah. Now, we're not in a natural market here. No. Um, so if you have a, a, a presidential administration, which may serve for another four years and yeah. still at least has two years left, yeah. um, that, that is saying that they want to eliminate your industry. Yeah. Why in the world would you make investments to increase production? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all you hear is the that the future is elsewhere mm-hmm. as far as like energy is concerned. Yeah, and um, you also have the threats of these bills that say that they can tell you how much you're going to charge too. So yeah. we want you to spend your money to increase your production, and then we'll tell you what you can charge for that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck making a profit. Right. Yeah. So, but it, profit it, well, motive it, is important, and it doesn't incentive. Just like what you're saying is, mm-hmm. it doesn't incentivize you to to go out and do the things that need mm-hmm. to be done. Like, yeah. It just it doesn't. Um, but in a natural market, a hundred dollar uh, uh, um, a barrel oil prices would incentivize people to get into the oil industry yeah. and increase production yeah. because they can make a bunch of money well, doing it. And stuff like fracking and that type of thing yep. becomes more more feasible because, well, you know, if it's, yeah, if I'm selling it for $100 a barrel, barrel it makes sense. Yeah. I, I think that the um, the price line on fracking is something like $50 a barrel. Like if, it, if, yeah. if oil is less than $50 a barrel, then it's not profitable to do fracking. If it's more than $50 a barrel, it can be. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. It depends on the kind of... Yeah, what you're pulling and that yeah, type of thing. But, yeah, um, but yeah, so there there are lines for this, and and so if you think about it in uh, in a real free market, um, what would happen is when the price of oil got over fifty dollars, then people would start doing things like fracking where they can now make a profit. Yeah. That would increase the the supply and lower the price. Yeah. And at some point, the price would lower below that fifty dollars a barrel, and they would stop doing the fracking, and then you know supply yeah. might be. Um, Restricted again. And then That's your friends, part of the f- friends that are in the oil industry are like, oh man, well, I don't have work again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in, in this particular case, um, there has been a whole bunch of economic sanctions on a major oil producer that's in order to starve them, presumably, yeah. um, to pressure them into uh, stopping doing what they were doing by, by hurting their economy, when it's done just the opposite. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's like the Russian economy is in good shape right now. Yeah. Um, because of these high oil prices. Because yeah. somebody's buying it. Even yeah, people it, are going to buy it. Yeah. Like, I mean, and and uh, truth is, we're going to buy it too. It's yeah. just not going to come directly from Russia. Right. <laughs> we're um, going to use middlemen. Yeah. We're going to end up buying it through China or India or somewhere else. Yeah. Um, I actually read uh, an essay um, about how, you know, the things were changing here um, at the behest of the West, but not necessarily in their, uh, favor. Yeah. Um, and the, the line at the end that I remember, (coughs) remember sort of, I'm not going to be able to quote it exactly, but, um, that I, I thought was really good is that, uh, we are, um, we're entering a new normal where Russia has the biggest military in Europe and, um, the, uh, economic prosperity, the West is dependent on Russia, India, and China. Of course, this isn't actually new. It's just a shame nobody noticed it before. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I think that that was a really insightful yeah. uh, line there yeah. um, because we have exported all of our production. Um, like, we are completely dependent on India and China for consumer goods. Yeah. Like, oh, there's yeah. very little that is made here. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah that's, and. There's- a lot of truth on that. Now we're we're still exporting energy in the yeah. U.S. We we aren't actually so dependent on Russia for energy. No. Um, so even with these high prices, we're still exporting to Europe. Yeah. Um, which you know, hey, there's another way to keep prices down. By the way, but again, the market dictates like they'll pay higher prices, so we'll ship it over so there if it's worthwhile. It yeah. Um, which is you know the distribution that happens when prices go up. Yeah. Like. We could consume it all here. And, and and there are countries that have restricted the exports of energy, like yeah. India. Yeah. Um, and we may end up doing that here. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't be really surprised, but I don't yeah. think that the, the industry would be particularly happy about it. Yeah. But well, and what, how much would it really help? I mean. Yeah. 
Um, and you know, back to the, so here we have uh, like they, the U S government made some decisions about their expectations, um, of trying to pressure Russia through economic sanctions and it's completely backfired. Um, that actually, uh, Europe and the U S economy is suffering more than Russia's is. Yeah. Um, and they still won't, they still won't bend. Yeah. Yeah. Really, you know, uh, relieve the sanctions. Yeah. Because we got to make a point. And we're more than happy to sacrifice however many of our own people as it takes yeah. to make our point, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Down to the last Ukrainian, right? Yeah. And American, apparently. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're creating poverty in this country as well. well. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't make sense. It, it almost makes me just think, just ha- the conversation we're having right now is, you know, it just makes me think, how easy it would be for somebody else to step in and fix a lot of these problems. Like, By I mean, not doing anything. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but like if you had... Just stopping what they're doing. Yeah. Ex- like, well, and that's kind of my point yeah. is like it would it would be so easy to just kind of walk in and be like, dude, a mm-hmm. lot... Like while there's so many problems that can't be fixed, like mm-hmm. some of these are pretty easy fixes. Yeah. You know, it just uh, takes... Open the Keystone Pipeline, relieve yeah. sanctions on Russia, let them export all the energy that they want. Yeah. Um, you know... Uh, relieve sanctions on Venezuela and Iran, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, like, you could you could at least alleviate some of these problems fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, and I, honestly, as, as bad as it's getting, at least with the fuel stuff, I don't think you get a whole lot of pushback. <laughs> yeah. Well, part of it is that the U.S. uses its military to... Um, to inf- uh, to strengthen its um, let's see how do I want to word this? Um, the U.S. uses its military for its individual corporations' economic interests. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, to to help profit <coughs> private corporations in the U.S. So the yeah. U.S. military is used to to strengthen the position of private corporations in the U.S. Yeah. Well. Um, so that's part of your problem too. Yeah. Again, not a free market. Yeah. Um, and you know, going back to the the uh, WHO with the pandemic treaty and, and whether or not it's true, but the idea of empowering them to make more decisions about healthcare in various countries and so forth. Look at their track record with COVID. Yeah. Almost everything they said was wrong all along the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, remember the first drug that they were pushing was remdesivir until it killed so many people that they stopped. Yeah. And it only took them six months. So they did better than the U.S. government did because I'm right. pretty sure Fauci's still pushing remdesivir. Oh, but, wow. Um, not pushing it now. Yeah, but, but yeah. He ain't, he ain't denying it, though. No, no, it's true. <laughs> um, the WHO at least took it off their list of approved medications right. within six months. Um, but there, there were huge mistakes, like the, the lockdowns, the um, masks, like none of that stuff worked. Yeah. Um, and so both with this and this, like, price gouging or price fixing or whatever, you know, these, these are examples of, um, of, of central planning attempts. Like this is again, you know, and it just doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because the people that are making the decisions that are trying to project out to the future, what things will be however long ahead, they're working with imperfect information to begin with. Now, I don't think that even if they had perfect information that they would get it right. They still can't get it right. Yeah. But they don't. Yeah. They don't know what's going to be, I mean, like if you're talking about, uh, you know, think about it in leaving, you know, food in the hands of so like some kind of government central planning board. Yeah. And they're like, okay, so um, in uh, eight months, we're going to have the orange crop from um, Florida and that'll feed however many people, you know, get them their vitamin C that they need for this number of people, blah, blah, blah. Then there's a freeze. Yeah. And they lose a bunch of the citrus crop. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> well, right. you know, we uh, we planned all of our production around this one. <clears throat> I mean, not this one thing, but this was a central but, part yeah, of our production plan. Yeah. And now we don't have it. Yeah. What do we do? Yeah. Well, people starve. Exactly. Uh, and and this this kind of thing too. This is well, why the free market is so good. It's it's because you're not dependent on any one person. Like yeah. you've got. 8 billion individuals making decisions that they think are the best decision for themselves. And some of them are right and some of them are wrong. But either way, um, it just pushes the market in the right direction and it self-corrects. And you're not so dependent on on any one thing that a failure results in the system 
collapsing. Completely collapsing, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a reason the Soviet Union fell. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's uh, that should be example enough. Yeah. Like, Central planning ends in starvation and genocide. Yeah. Like, I mean, well, and it does. Like, it, yeah. you just look through history, man. Like, these things don't work. Yeah. And back on and this... And we're moving towards it more and more and more. Yeah. Um, because people think somebody's got to have the answer. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> like, there's somebody smarter than me that knows. Yeah. And that person is me. And I'm saying, you just let people make their own decisions. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, a, that's the answer. Um, and, uh, you know, on the same pathway, you've got Biden that's using the Defense Production Act um, for green energy products. Yeah. Right? Like, they're they're trying to use the defense... They, they are using, yeah. I should say, the Defense Production Act to promote... Um, uh, these green energy products, uh, solar and wind and what have you. Um, now, the Defense Production Act was supposed to be for uh, handling, uh, you know, military emergencies. And well, I, we, I, I that, wait, 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 now we're at war with climate change. Oh, that's right, and the <laughs> pandemic, and the pandemic. Yeah, we, we're fighting the war on two fronts here now, Michael. <laughs> we, you got you got to get on board with some of this. That's Defense right. Production Act stuff, man. Like, yeah. I, I know you're a libertarian and all, but come on, man. We're at war. Well, uh, let me tell you what it does. All right. All right. Um, it forces businesses to accept and prioritize uh, contracts, specific contracts. Yeah. Um, and it allows the president, Biden in this case, yeah. um, to create mechanisms to allocate materials, services, and production to these ends. Yeah. All right. Um, and control or redirect resources from the civilian economy. Yeah. Now, what, what I think of is Thomas Sowell here. Yeah. And I think of Thomas Sowell and him, him saying, the first rule of economics is scarcity. Yeah. There's never enough of something to satisfy all the demand for it. Yeah. The first rule of government is to ignore the first rule of economics. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> Oh, uh, great man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so just think of, you know, go let's think about Bastiat in this yeah. case, right? The seen and the unseen. Now, if Biden starts redirecting civilian resources into this production, yeah, what are we going to lose? What isn't going to be produced as a result of this? Now, I don't have yeah. the answer to this because this is like a really complex, yeah, yeah. you know, question, but... Um, and, and I don't even know what all materials are, are needed for the things that they're, they're wanting to do and, and so forth. And what yeah. other, what other industries use those materials and so but on. You can, but what you're, you what can, you're doing is you are taking away resources from the civilian economy yeah. to feed into whatever it is that the government wants to do. And that by necessity and, makes us all poorer. Well, and in a time where resources are more scarce and valuable than they have been in a long time. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at the shortage. They're not more valuable. Your money's just yeah. worth less. Well, yeah. Well, there you go. I, I always, yeah, you, you're right. Yeah. But but still, like, there's scarcity is a problem right now anyway. And so you're talking about redirecting resources to for for no real gain, mm -hmm. you know. Well, and um, there was some report came out not that long ago that finally admitted that, uh, because, you know, they've been pushing us for years that, like, not only do we need to shift our economy to a green economy, but green energy is cheaper. Yeah, that's always the push. But well, the, <laughs> there was a report that came out just recently that said, well, yeah. when you actually take a holistic view of it, it's not. Yeah. Well, which, of course, if you know anything about economics, you already knew. Because if it was cheaper, we'd, we'd be, be using doing it. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like there's not so. this huge cabal of uh, of oil producers that are preventing other um, forms of energy from taking the place. It is funny that you mentioned that though, because a lot of people believe exactly what you just said. Yeah, a lot. There are a lot of people out there that think that the oil companies are in this big like thing, just like holding all of the stuff back mm -hmm. when. People believe that. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that they do. The truth is that the oil companies are also trying to produce green energy. Well, that, that, because, yeah, at the end of the day, that's what the oil companies want to do. When mm -hmm. As this transition happens, and the, they still want to be part of the energy they industry. They want to be, they're still, yeah, this is their industry. They don't want to just lose out to some other company. Yeah. They want to be part of the transition. Yeah. But that does not mean that they're preventing other companies from providing you with cheap yeah. fuel. No. 
It's just not true. No, because if that was the case, they would just they would still be the ones giving it to you because mm-hmm. they're in the industry. Like that's if if these things were ready and feasible and ready for prime time, they would be doing them. Yeah. Um, and I, I do believe at some point we'll hit a point where these things will be feasible and will work. Yeah. Um, I just think that the the government, as as of right now, are just trying to force this when it's not mm-hmm. ready. Yeah. Because when, when the time comes, these companies will be ready to move that direction. Mm-hmm. It, we're just not there yet. Yeah. Or some company will be ready to move well, yeah. that direction. And it may not be the companies we see now. Like yeah. it may be some guy in the garage, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't know. Yeah, so. that finally develops the perpetual motion machine. Yeah, and, yeah. something like that. Um, or uh, cold fusion or whatever. Speaking of perpetual um, motion, we um, missed the, the big headline of the weekend. Which was? Biden fell off his bike, man. Oh, yeah. I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, I just don't, don't care. It popped. It, it's funny, though. It popped, I did see it, though, and it made me laugh. Well, it was funny, yeah. yeah. Um, it just, when, when you were talking about Biden with the, um, with the, Defense Production Act stuff. All I could picture was like this guy falling off his bike, and and at the same time like giving orders as far as like what we're gonna do with our defense production stuff. Yeah. Like, the, well, he he had uh, toe clips um, on the bike. He just got yeah. stuck in the toe clips. Anybody who who rode a boat bike regularly like a decade ago has done that. At has least done once. that. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I to give him. <laughs> to, to be fair to the poor old man. <laughs> well, I still, I just, it's elder abuse as far as I'm concerned. I still thought it was funny. I'm, oh, I, I, I thought it was hilarious. I, I did watched laugh. that video like three times, man. I had it on a loop for a minute there. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I don't think that I have anything else. Yeah, that was the reason I was hitting on the big news. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just close it out with the big yeah, news. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, all right. Well, uh, we got a podcast in. <laughs> now, quick before we both like really yeah, fall into our coughing fits. We're, we're starting to wind down here. I can feel it. Yeah, I'm I'm like really swallowing hard <laughs> yeah. at this point. Um all right. So uh yeah, sorry is a again like a week and a half. We're trying we one day are we're trying. gonna one day we're gonna be healthy again and we're yeah. gonna be a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> exactly yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're trying to get back on schedule. And so oh um, that reminds me, though, I did want to announce that we are planning um, to add something new. Yeah. Um, so I know it doesn't seem like this will ever happen right now, but uh, there are times when we can meet for a second time in a week. And actually, it could have happened this last week, except that everybody got sick. But um, from time to time, uh, we are able to to meet more than once a week. Yeah. And so what we're planning to do... Um, is when that is possible, uh, we are going to start a new feature uh, called Libertography. And uh, what Libertography will be is we'll just take a, a, a broad topic, um, say, uh, you know, monetary policy or uh, foreign War, affairs yeah. or you know, something like that, um, and just describe what our world um, would be within that topic. Yeah. Um, so uh, just explain what the... I guess well, kinda, it, what well, our kind of libertarian, what the yeah. the you well, know, like, anarchist I position like take would it be. From a couple of positions, like one definitely, like so, if one of us was to become president, mm-hmm. like what would we do to to implement these changes and how we think they would affect mm-hmm. society? Yeah. Um. And and like I say, I, I think it I think it will be fun. I'm yeah. excited about it. So yeah, we're gonna try and give you a top down view focused in on a particular um, aspect of society. If, if a libertarian was running it, yeah, exactly. if, if, if I hate to say running it, yeah. um, if well, a, a libertarian got their way at how it functioned, yeah, there you go, absolutely. If one of us got our way <laughs> right. at how it functioned, and absolutely. hopefully we're a fairly typical, you know, anarchist, like radical, but yeah, um, like certainly, uh, we, far libertarian, libertarian, I but would, libertarian. I would say we're pretty principled though, mm-hmm. like so. Um, and hopefully that'll be fun. And uh, so, yeah, like I said, the, the feature will be called Libertography. So whenever you see a, an episode come out with that as the first word. Yeah. Um, that'll then, be kind of, that'll get, that'll let yeah. you know that that's what you're in for. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, it, it'll probably be set up as Libertography Foreign Affairs or, yeah. you know, whatever the, the topic is. Absolutely. And um, 
I mean, I'm uh, looking forward to these. I think yeah, they're going to be that, fun. I, I think it'll be fun too. I think that it'll be informative. I um, I hope that uh, our audience enjoys that. And um, if you have anything to say about that, um, you know, send me an email, Michael yeah. at the Liberty dot com. What if I really kind of hope, like fun to you. Well, and what I kind of hope we get out of it is that these can be episodes that people can refer people to. So yeah. when you get into debates with somebody about a certain mm-hmm. subject, this is an episode. Well, you should listen to this. It really mm-hmm. changed my mind, or something like that. Yeah. You know. Or it might give you some things to think yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, gives I'm you really some. Pers- yeah, absolutely, man. So. Yeah, I yeah. think it's going to be fun. I'm excited. Yeah. We just got to get the time to start getting them out there. I also b- I bought the domains today. Oh, did you? Do- <laughs> yeah, nice. Did. Good call. Good call. <laughs> yeah. They <laughs> redirect to the Liberty Mic, but. Yeah. You know. That's good. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, yeah. So that's uh, that's it for now. Um, and we, we're planning to be back in a week. Absolutely. Uh, you know, assuming that we're still breathing. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll be back in a week. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll bring you another episode. In the meantime, um, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on uh, iTunes, Podbean, and YouTube. <coughs> it's been lo- so long since I said all this, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get the list together. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, you know, like and share. Um, tell your friends. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, spread the word. Because, like, you know, we, we like to see our audience growing. Absolutely. And, um and, you know, reaching more people with this message. And uh, hopefully we can change some minds before the 2024 <laughs> <laughs> elections and at least make a little dent. Yep. Um, at least convince people that they, if regardless of whether they're voting for Republicans or Democrats, uh, th- their vote is wasted. <laughs> they're throwing their vote away. Throwing their vote away on those <laughs> major parties. Yep. Um, so uh, we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.